shortest path bridging, specified in the IEEE 802.1 ACK standard, is a computer networking technology intended to simplify the creation and configuration of networks, while enabling multi-path routing. It is the replacement for the older spanning tree protocols, IEEE 802.1D, IEEE 802.1W, IEEE 802.1s. These blocked any redundant paths that could result in a layer 2 loop, whereas SPB allows all paths to be active with multiple equal cost paths, provides much larger layer 2 topologies, supports faster convergence times, and improves the efficiency by allowing traffic to load share across all paths of a mesh network. It is designed to virtually eliminate human error during configuration and preserves the plug-and-play nature that established Ethernet as the de facto protocol at layer 2. The technology provides logical Ethernet networks on native Ethernet infrastructures using a link state protocol to advertise both topology and logical network membership. Packets are encapsulated at the edge either in Media Access Control and Media Access Control 802.1 or tagged 802.1Q-802.1 add frames and transported only to other members of the logical network. Unicast, Multicast, and Broadcast are supported and all routing is on asymmetric shortest paths. The control plane is based on the intermediate system to intermediate system, leveraging a small number of extensions defined in RFC 6329. History On March 4, 2006, the working group posted 802.1 Act Draft 0.1. In December 2011, shortest path bridging was evaluated by the JITC and approved for deployment within the U.S. Department of Defense because of the ease in integrated OA and M and interoperability with current protocols. On March 2012 the IEEE approved the 802.1 ACK standard. In May 2013 the first public multi-vendor interoperability was demonstrated as SPB served as the backbone for Intrip 2013 in Las Vegas. The 2014 Winter Olympics was the first fabric-enabled games using shortest path bridging IEEE 802.1 ACK technology. During the games this fabric network was capable of handling up to 54,000 kbps of traffic. In 2013 and 2014 SPB was used to build the IntrapNet backbone with only 1-10 the resources of prior years. During Intrap 2014 SPB was used as the backbone protocol which can enable software-defined networking functionalities. Benefits Both SPBV and SPBM inherit key benefits of link state routing. The ability to use all available physical connectivity, because loop avoidance uses a control plane with a global view of network topology, fast restoration of connectivity after failure, again because of link state routing's global view of network topology, under failure, the property that only directly affected traffic is impacted during restoration. All unaffected traffic just continues, rapid restoration of broadcast and multicast connectivity because ISIS floods all of the required information in the SPB extensions to ISIS, thereby allowing unicast and multicast connectivity to be installed in parallel, with no need for a second phase signaling process to run over the converged unicast topology to compute and install multicast trees. Virtualization is becoming an increasingly important aspect of a number of key applications, in both carrier and enterprise space, and SPBM with its Mac in Mac data path providing complete separation between client and server layers, is uniquely suitable for these. Data center virtualization articulates the desire to flexibly and efficiently harness available compute resources in a way that may rapidly be modified to respond to varying application demands, without the need to dedicate physical resources to a specific application. One aspect of this is server virtualization. The other is connectivity virtualization, because a physically distributed set of server resources must be attached to a single IP subnet, and modifiable in an operationally simple and robust way. SPBM delivers this. Because of its client-server model, it offers a perfect emulation of a transparent Ethernet LAN segment, which is the IP subnet seen at layer 3. A key component of how it does this is implementing VLANs with scoped multicast trees which means no egress discard of broadcast unknown traffic, a feature common to approaches that use a small number of shared trees, 
hence the network does not simply degrade with size as the percentage of frames discarded goes up. It also supports single-touch provisioning, so that configuration is simple and robust. The port of a virtual server must simply be bound locally to the SPBMI SID identifying the LAN segment, after which is is for SPB floods this binding, and all nodes that need to install forwarding state to implement the LAN segment do so automatically. The carrier space equivalent of this application is the delivery of Ethernet VPN services to enterprises over common carrier infrastructure. The required attributes are fundamentally the same complete transparency for customer Ethernet services, and complete isolation between one customer's traffic and that of all other customers. The multiple virtual LAN segment model provides this, and the single-touch provisioning model eases carrier operations. Furthermore, the Mac in Mac DataPath allows the carrier to deploy the best-in-class Ethernet OAM suit, entirely transparently and independently from any OAM which a customer may choose to run. A further consequence of SPBM's transparency in both data plane and control plane is that it provides a perfect, no compromise delivery of the complete MEF 6.1 server set. This includes not only E-Line and ELAN constructs, but also E-Tree connectivity. This latter is clearly very relevant to enterprises customers of carrier VPN services which have this network structure internally. It also provides the carrier with a toolkit to support geo-redundant broadband backhaul. In this applications, many DSLAMs or other access equipments must be backhauled to multiple BNG sites, with application-determined binding of sessions to a BNG. However, DLSAMs must not be allowed to communicate with each other, because carriers then lose the ability to control peer-to-peer -peer connectivity MEFE tree does just this and further provides an efficient multicast fabric for the distribution of IPTV. SPBM offers both the ideal multicast replication model, where packets are replicated only at fork points in the shortest path tree that connects members, and also the less state-intensive head-end replication model where in essence serial unicast packets are sent to all other members along the same shortest path first tree. These two models are selected by specifying properties of the service at the edge which affect the transit node decisions on multicast state installation. This allows for a trade-off to be made between optimum transit replication points versus reduced core state of the head-end replication model. These selections can be different for different members of the same individual service ID allowing different trade-offs to be made for different members. Figure 5 below is a quick way to understand what SPBM is doing on the scale of the entire network. Figure 5 shows how a 7-member ELAN is created from the edge membership information and the deterministic distributed calculation of per source, per service trees with transit replication. Head-end replication is not shown as it is trivial and simply uses the existing Unicast FIBs to forward copies serially to the known other receivers. Operations and Management 802.1 ACK builds on all existing Ethernet operations, administration and management. Since 802.1 ACK ensures that its unicast and multicast packets for a given virtual LAN follow the same forward and reverse path and use completely standard 802 encapsulations, all of the methods of 802.1 ACK and Y1731 operate unchanged on an 802.1 ACK network. CIEE 802.1 AG and ITU Recommendation Y1731 High Level 802.1 AG is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers sanctioned link state Ethernet control plane for all IEEE VLANs covered in IEEE 802.1 Q Shortest Path Bridging Virtual Local Area Network Identifier or Shortest Path Bridging VID or provides capability that is backwards compatible with spanning tree technologies. Shortest Path Bridging Media Access Control or, provides additional values which capitalize on provider backbone bridge capabilities. SPB combines an Ethernet data path IEEE 802.1 in the case of SPBM, with an ASIS link state control protocol running between Shortest Path Bridges links. The link state protocol is used to discover and advertise the network topology and compute shortest path trees from all bridges in the SPT region. In SPBM, 
the Backbone MAC addresses of the participating nodes and also the service membership information for interfaces to non-participating devices ports, is distributed. Topology data is then input to a calculation engine which computes a metric shortest path trees based on minimum cost from each participating node to all other participating nodes. In SPBV these trees provide a shortest path tree where individual MAC address can be learned and group address membership can be distributed. In SPBM the shortest path trees are then used to populate forwarding tables for each participating node's individual BMAC addresses and for group addresses. Group multicast trees are sub-trees of the default shortest path tree formed by pairing. Depending on the topology several different equal cost multi-path trees are possible and SPB supports multiple algorithms pairs as instance. In SPB as with other link state based protocols, the computations are done in a distributed fashion. Each node computes the Ethernet compliant forwarding behavior independently based on a normally synchronized common view of the network and a service attachment points ports. Ethernet filtering database tables are populated locally to independently and deterministically implement its portion of the network forwarding behavior. The two different flavors of data path give rise to two slightly different versions of this protocol. One is intended where complete isolation of many separate instances of client LANs and their associated device MAC addresses is desired, and it therefore uses a full encapsulation. The other is intended where such isolation of client device MAC addresses is not necessary, and it reuses only the existing VLAN tag aka IEEE 802.1Q on participating network to network interface links. Chronologically SPBV came first, with the project originally being conceived to address scalability and convergence of MSTP. At the time the specification of provider backbone bridging was progressing and it became apparent that leveraging both the PBB data plane and a link state control plane would significantly extend Ethernet's capabilities and applications. Provider link state bridging was a straw man proposal brought to the IEEE 802.1 AC Shortest Path Bridging Working Group, in order to provide a concrete example of such a system. As IEEE 802.1 AC standardization has progressed, some of the detailed mechanisms proposed by PLSB have been replaced by functional equivalents, but all of the key concepts embodied in PLSB are being carried forward into the standard. The two flavors will be described separately although the differences are almost entirely in the data plane. Equals shortest path bridging VID equals, shortest path bridging enables shortest path trees for VLAN bridges all IEEE 802.1 data planes and SPB is the term used in general. Recently there has been a lot of focus on SPBM as explained due to its ability to control the new PBB data plane and leverage certain capabilities such as removing the need to do BMAC learning and automatically creating individual and group trees. SPBV was actually the original project that endeavored to enable Ethernet VLANs to better utilize mesh networks. A primary feature of shortest path bridging is the ability to use link state is is to learn network topology. In SPBV the mechanism used to identify the tree is to use a different shortest path VLAN ID for each source bridge. The ISIS topology is leveraged both to allocate unique SPV IDs and to enable shortest path forwarding for individual and group addresses. Originally targeted for small low configuration networks SPB grew into a larger project encompassing the latest provider control plane for SPBV and harmonizing the concepts of Ethernet data plane. Proponents of SPB believe that Ethernet can leverage link state and maintain the attributes that have made Ethernet one of the most encompassing data plane transport technologies. When we refer to Ethernet it is the layer 2 frame format defined by IEEE 802.3 and IEEE 802.1. Ethernet VLAN bridging IEEE 802.1Q is the frame forwarding paradigm that fully supports higher level protocols such as IP. SPB defines a shortest path region which is the boundary of the shortest path topology and the rest of the VLAN topology SPB operates by learning the SPB capable bridges and growing the region to include the SPB capable bridges that have the same base VID and MSTID configuration digest. 
SPBV builds shortest path trees that support loop prevention and optionally support loop mitigation on the SPV ID. SPBV still allows learning of Ethernet MAC addresses but it can distribute multicast address that can be used to prune the shortest path trees according to the multicast membership either through multiple MAC registration protocol or directly using ISIS distribution of multicast membership. SPBV builds shortest path trees but also interworks with legacy bridges running rapid spanning tree protocol and multiple spanning tree protocol. SPBV uses techniques from MSTP regions to interwork with non-SPT regions behaving logically as a large distributed bridge as viewed from outside the region. SPBV supports shortest path trees but SPBV also builds a spanning tree which is computed from the link state database and uses the base VID. This means that SPBV can use this traditional spanning tree for computation of the common and internal spanning tree. The CIST is the default tree used to interwork with other legacy bridges. It also serves as a fallback spanning tree if there are configuration problems with SPBV. SPBV has been designed to manage a moderate number of bridges. SPBV differs from SPBM in that MAC addresses are learned on all bridges that lie on the shortest path and a shared VLAN learning is used since destination MACs may be associated with multiple SPV IDs. SPBV learns all MACs it forwards even outside the SPBV region. Equals shortest path bridging MAC equals, SPBM reuses the PBB data plane which does not require that the backbone core bridges learn encapsulated client addresses. At the edge of the network the CMAC addresses are learned. SPBM is very similar to PLSB using the same data and control planes but the format and contents of the control messages in PLSB are not compatible. Individual MAC frames from an Ethernet attached device that are received at the SPBM edge are encapsulated in a PBB IEEE 802.1 header and then traverse the IEEE 802.1 ACK network unchanged until they are stripped of the encapsulation as they egress back to the non-participating attached network at the far side of the participating network. Ethernet destination addresses perform learning over the logical LAN and are forwarded to the appropriate participating BMAC address to reach the far end Ethernet destination. In this manner Ethernet MAC addresses are never looked up in the core of an IEEE 802.1 ACK network. When comparing SPBM to PBB, the behavior is almost identical to a PBB IEEE 802.1 network. PBB does not specify how BMAC addresses are learned and PBB may use a spanning tree to control the BBLAN. In SPBM the main difference is that BMAC addresses are distributed or computed in the control plane, eliminating the BMAC learning in PBB. Also SPBM ensures that the route followed is shortest path tree. The forward and reverse paths used for unicast and multicast traffic in an IEEE 802.1 ACK network are symmetric. This symmetry permits the normal Ethernet continuity fault messages IEEE 802.1 AG to operate unchanged for SPBV and SPBM and has desirable properties with respect to time distribution protocols such as precision time protocol. Also existing Ethernet loop prevention is augmented by loop mitigation to provide fast data plane convergence. Group address and unknown destination individual frames are optimally transmitted to only members of the same Ethernet service. IEEE 802.1 ACK supports the creation of thousands of logical Ethernet services in the form of E-Line, ELAN or E-Tree constructs which are formed between non-participating logical ports of the IEEE 802.1 ACK network. These group address packets are encapsulated with a PBB header which indicates the source participating address in the SA while the DAR indicates the locally significant group address this frame should be forwarded on and which source bridge originated the frame. The IEEE 802.1 ACK multicast forwarding tables are created based on computations such that every bridge which is on the shortest path between a pair of bridges which are members of the same service group will create proper forwarding database state to forward or replicate frames it receives to that members of that service group. Since the group address computation produce shortest path trees, there is only ever one copy of a multicast packet on any given link. Since only bridges on a shortest path between participating logical ports create forwarding database state the multicast makes the efficient use of network resources. 
the actual group address forwarding operation operates more or less identically to classical Ethernet, the backbone destination address plus backbone VLAN identifier combination are looked up to find the egress set of next hops. The only difference compared with classical Ethernet is that reverse learning is disabled for participating bridge backbone media access control addresses and is replaced with an ingress check and discard. Learning is however implemented at the edges of the SPBM multicast tree to learn the BMAC to MAC address relationship for correct individual frame encapsulation in the reverse direction. Properly implemented an IEEE 802.1 ACK network can support up to 1,000 participating bridges and provide tens of thousands of LEH2 ELAN services to Ethernet devices. This can be done by simply configuring the ports facing the Ethernet devices to indicate they are members of a given service. As new members come and go, the ISIS protocol will advertise the ISID membership changes and the computations will grow or shrink the trees in the participating node network as necessary to maintain the efficient multicast property for that service. IEEE 802.1 ACK has the property that only the point of attachment of a service needs configuration when a new attachment point comes or goes. The trees produced by the computations will automatically be extended or pruned as necessary to maintain connectivity. In some existing implementations this property is used to automatically add or remove attachment points for dual-homed technologies such as rings to maintain optimum packet flow between a non-participating ring protocol and the IEEE 802.1 ACK network by activating a secondary attachment point and deactivating a primary attachment point. Equals failure recovery equals Failure recovery is as per normal as is with the link failure being advertised and new computations being performed, resulting in new FDB tables. Since no Ethernet addresses are advertised or known by this protocol, there is no relearning required by the SPBM core and its learned encapsulations are unaffected by a transit node or link failure. Fast link failure detection may be performed using IEEE 802.1 AG continuity check messages which test link status and report a failure to the ISIS protocol. This allows much faster failure detection than is possible using the ISIS hello message loss mechanisms. Both SPBV and SPBM inherit the rapid convergence of a link state control plane. A special attribute of SPBM is its ability to rebuild multicast trees in a similar time to unicast convergence, because it substitutes computation for signaling. When an SPBM bridge has performed the computations on a topology database, it knows whether it is on the shortest path between a root and one or more leaves of the SPT and can install state accordingly. Convergence is not gated by incremental discovery of a bridge a Euro unregistered trademark as place on a multicast tree by the use of separate signaling transactions. However, SPBM on a node does not operate completely independently of its peers, and enforces agreement on the current network topology with its peers. This very efficient mechanism uses exchange of a single digest of link state covering the entire network view and does not need agreement on each path to each route individually. The result is that the volume of messaging exchanged to converge the network is in proportion to the incremental change in topology and not the number of multicast trees in the network. A simple link event that may change many trees is communicated by signaling the link event only. The consequent tree construction is performed by local computation at each node. The addition of a single service access point to a service instance involves only the announcement of the ICID, regardless of the number of trees. Similarly the removal of a bridge, which might involve the rebuilding of hundreds to thousands of trees, is signaled only with a few link state updates. Commercial offerings will likely offer SPB over multi-chassis lag. In this environment multiple switch chassis appears a single switch to the SPB control plane, and multiple links between pairs of chassis appears an aggregate link. In this context a single link or node failure is not seen by the control plane and is handled locally resulting in sub-50 milliseconds recovery times. Equals animations equals, following are three animated GIFs which help to show the behavior of 802.1 AC. The first of these GIFs, shown in figure 5, demonstrates the routing in the 66-node network where we have created a 7-member ELAN using ISID 100. In this example we show the ECT tree created from each member to reach all of the other members. 
we cycle through each member to show the full set of trees created for this service. We pause at one point to show the symmetry of routing between two of the nodes and emphasize it with a red line. In each case the source of the tree is highlighted with a small purple V. The second of these animated GIFs, shown in figure 6, demonstrates 80 CT paths in the same 66 node network as figure 4. In each subsequent animated frame the same source is used but a different destination is shown. For each frame, all of the shortest paths are shown superimposed between the source and destination. When two shortest paths traverse the same hop, the thickness of the lines being drawn is increased. In addition to the 66 node network, a small multi-level data center style network is also shown with sources and destinations both within the servers and from servers to the router layer at the top. This animation helps to show the diversity of the ECT being produced. The last of these animated GIFs, shown in Figure 7, demonstrates source destination ECT paths using all 16 of the standard algorithms currently defined. Details equals equal cost multi-tree equals 16 equal cost multi-tree paths are initially defined, however there are many more possible. ECMT in an IEEE 802.1 ACK network is more predictable than with Internet Protocol or Multi-Protocol label switching because of symmetry between the forward and reverse paths. The choice as to which ECMT path will be used is therefore an operator assigned head-end decision while it is a local slash hashing decision with IPMPLS. IEEE 802.1 ACK, when faced with a choice between two equal link cost paths, uses the following logic for its first ECMT tie-breaking algorithm, first, if one path is shorter than the other in terms of hops, the shorter path is chosen, otherwise, the path with the minimum bridge identifier bridge priority concatenated with is chosen. Other ECMT algorithms are created by simply using known permutations of the bridge priority SIZIDs. For example, the second defined ECMT algorithm uses the path with a minimum of the inverse of the bridge identifier and can be thought of as taking the path with the maximum node identifier. For SPBM, each permutation is instantiated as a distinct BVID. The upper limit of multipath permutations is gated by the number of BVIDs delegated to 802.1 ACK operation, a maximum of 4094. Although the number of useful path permutations would only require a fraction of the available BVID space. 14 additional ECMT algorithms are defined with different bit masks applied to the bridge identifiers. Since the bridge identifier includes a priority field, it is possible to adjust the ECMT behavior by changing the bridge priority up or down. A service is assigned to a given ECMT BVID at the edge of the network by configuration. As a result, non-participating packets associated with that service are encapsulated with a VID associated with the desired ECMT end-to-end -end path. All individual and group address traffic associated with this service will therefore use the proper ECMT BVID and be carried symmetrically end-to-end -end on the proper equal cost multipath. Essentially the operator decides which services go in which ECMT paths unlike a hashing solution used in other systems such as IPMPLS. Trees can support link aggregation groups within a tree branch segment where some form of hashing occurs. This symmetric and end-to-end -end ECMT behavior gives IEEE 802.1 ACK a highly predictable behavior and offline engineering tools can accurately model exact data flows. The behavior is also advantageous to networks where one-way delay measurements are important. This is because the one-way delay can be accurately computed as one-half the round-trip delay. Such computations are used by time distribution protocols such as IEEE 1588 for frequency and time of day synchronization as required between precision clock sources and wireless base stations. Shown below are three figures, 5, 6, 7, which show 8 and 16 equal cost tree behavior in different network topologies. These are composites of screen captures of an 802.1 ACK network emulator and show the source in purple, the destination in yellow, and then all the computed and available shortest paths in pink. The thicker the line, the more shortest paths use that link. 
the animation shows three different networks and a variety of source and destination pairs which continually change to help visualize what is happening. The equal cost tree algorithms can be almost extended through the use of opaque data which allows extensions beyond the base 16 algorithms more or less infinitely. It is expected that other standards groups or vendors will produce variations on the currently defined algorithms with behaviors suited for different network styles. It is expected that numerous shared tree models will also be defined, as will hop by hop hash based equal cost multipath style behaviors all defined by a VID and an algorithm that every node agrees to run. Equals traffic placement engineering equals 802.1 ACK does not spread traffic on a hop by hop basis. Instead, 802.1 ACK allows assignment of an service ID to a VLAN ID at the edge of the network. A VID will correspond to exactly one of the possible sets of shortest paths in the network and will never stray from that routing. If there are 10 or so shortest paths between different nodes, it is possible to assign different services to different paths and to know that the traffic for a given service will follow exactly the given path. In this manner traffic can easily be assigned to the desired shortest path. In the event that one of the paths becomes overloaded it is possible to move some services off those shortest paths by reassigning the services ISID to a different, less loaded, VID at the edges of the network. The deterministic nature of the routing makes offline predict ion experiment to shy on of the network loading much simpler since actual routes are not dependent on the contents of the packet headers with the exception of the VLAN identifier. Figure 4 shows four different equal cost paths between nodes 7 and 5. An operator can achieve relatively good balance of traffic across the cut between nodes 0 and 2, and 1 and 3, by assigning the services at nodes 7 and 5 to one of the four desired VIDs. Using more than four equal cost tree paths in the network will likely allow all four of these paths to be used. Balance can also be achieved between nodes 6 and 4 in a similar manner. In the event that an operator does not wish to manually assign services to shortest paths it is a simple matter for a switch vendor to allow a simple hash of the ISID to one of the available VIDs to give a degree of non-engineered spreading. For example, the ISID modulo the number of ECT VIDs could be used to decide on the actual relative VID to use. In the event that the ECT paths are not sufficiently diverse the operator has the option of adjusting the inputs to the distributed ECT algorithms to apply attraction or repulsion from a given node by adjusting that node's bridge priority. This can be experimented with via offline tools until the desired routes are achieved at which point the bias can be applied to the real network and then ISIDs can be moved to the resulting routes. Looking at the animations in Figure 6 showed the diversity available for traffic engineering in a 66-node network. In this animation there are 8 ECT paths available from each highlighted source to destination and therefore services could be assigned to 8 different pools based on the VID. One such initial assignment in Figure 6 could therefore be with subsequent fine-tuning as required. Equals example equals we will work through SPBM behavior on a small example, with emphasis on the shortest path trees for unicast and multicast. The network shown in figure 1 consists of 8 participating nodes numbered 0 through 7. These would be switches or routers running the IEEE 802.1 ACK protocol. Each of the 8 participating nodes has a number of adjacencies numbered 1 5. These would likely correspond to interface indexes or possibly port numbers. Since 802.1 ACK does not support parallel interfaces each interface corresponds to an adjacency. The port slash interface index numbers are of course local and are shown because the output of the computations produce an interface index or a set of interface indexes which are part of the forwarding information base together with a destination MAC address and backbone VID. The network has a fully meshed inner core of four nodes and then four outer nodes, each dual homed onto a pair of inner core nodes. Normally when nodes come from the factory they have a MAC address assigned which becomes a node identifier but for the purpose of this example we will assume that the nodes have MAC addresses of the form 0 o'clock 00 n 00 where n is the noded from figure 1. Therefore, node 2 has a MAC address of 0 o'clock 00 00. 
Node 2 is connected to Node 7 via Node 2's interface slash 5. The ASIS protocol runs on all the links shown since they are between participating nodes. The ASIS Hello protocol has a few additions for 802.1 ACK including information about backbone VIDs to be used by the protocol. We will assume that the operator has chosen to use backbone VIDs 101 and 102 for this instance of 802.1 ACK on this network. The node will use their MAC addresses as the ASIS CISID and join a single ASIS level and exchange link state packets. The LSPs will contain node information and link information such that every node will learn the full topology of the network. Since we have not specified any link weights in this example, the ASIS protocol will pick a default link metric for all links, therefore all routing will be minimum hop count. After topology discovery the next step is distributed calculation of the unicast routes for both ECMP VIDs and population of the unicast forwarding tables. Consider the route from node 7 to node 5, there are a number of equal cost paths. 802.1 AC specifies how to choose two of them, the first is referred to as the low path ID path. This is the path which is the minimum noded on it. In this case the low path ID path is the 7015 path. Therefore, each node on that path will create a forwarding entry toward the MAC address of node 5 using the first ECMP VID 101. Conversely, 802.1 AC specifies a second ECMP tie-breaking algorithm called high path ID. This is the path with the maximum node identifier on it and in the example is the 7235 path. Node 7 will therefore have a FIB that among other things indicates, MAC 0 o'clock 0500 slash vid 101 the next hop is interface slash 1. MAC 0 o'clock 0500 slash vid 102 the next hop is interface slash 2. Node 5 will have exactly the inverse in its FIB, MAC 0 o'clock 0700 slash vid 101 the next hop is interface slash 1. MAC 0 o'clock 0700 slash vid 102 the next hop is interface slash 2. The intermediate nodes will also produce consistent results so for example node 1 will have the following entries. MAC 0 o'clock 0700 slash vid 101 the next hop is interface slash 5. MAC 0 o'clock 0700 slash vid 102 the next hop is interface slash 4. MAC 0 o'clock 0500 slash vid 101 the next hop is interface slash 2. MAC 0 o'clock 0500 slash vid 102 the next hop is interface slash 2. And node 2 will have entries as follows, MAC 0 o'clock 0500 slash vid 101 the next hop is interface slash 2. MAC 0 o'clock 0500 slash vid 102 the next hop is interface slash 3. MAC 0 o'clock 0700 slash vid 101 the next hop is interface slash 5. MAC 0 o'clock 0700 slash vid 102 the next hop is interface slash 5. If we had an attached non-participating device at node 7 talking to a non-participating device at node 5, they would communicate over one of these shortest paths with a MAC in MAC encapsulated frame. The MAC header on any of the NNI links would show an outer source address of 0 o'clock 70.00, an outer destination address of 0 o'clock 50.00 and a BVID of either 101 or 102 depending on which has been chosen for this set of non-participating ports bids. The header once inserted at node 7 when received from node A, would not change on any of the links until it egressed back to non-participating device C at node 5. All participating devices would do a simple DAR plus VID lookup to determine the outgoing interface, and would also check that incoming interface is the proper next hop for the packets SA plus VID. The addresses of the participating node 0 o'clock 0000, 0 o'clock 0700 are never learned but are advertised by ZIS as the node CISID. Unicast forwarding to a non-participating client address is of course only possible when the first hop participating node is able to know which last hop participating node is attached to the desired non-participating node. Since this information is not advertised by IEEE 802.1 AC it has to be learned. The mechanism for learning is identical to IEEE 802.1 R, in short, the corresponding outer MAC Unicast DAR, if not known as replaced by a multicast DAR and when a response is received, 
The essay of that response now tells us the data used to reach the non-participating node that sourced the response for example node 7 learns that C is reached by node 5. Since we wish to group scope sets of non-participating ports into services and prevent them from multicasting to each other, i.e. E802.1 ACT provides mechanism for per source, per service multicast forwarding and defines a special multicast destination address format to provide this. Since the multicast address must uniquely identify the tree, and because there is a tree per source per unique service, the multicast address contains two components, a service component in the low order 24 bits and a network-wide unique identifier in the upper 22 bits. Since this is a multicast address the multicast bit is set, and since we are not using the standard OUI space for these manufactured addresses, the local L bit is set to disambiguate these addresses. In figure 3 above, this is represented with the DAW equals 7, O, where the 7 represents packets originating from node 7 and the colored O represents the ELAN service we are scoped within. Prior to creating multicast forwarding for a service, nodes with ports that face that service must be told they are members. For example, nodes 7, 4, 5 and 6 are told they are members of the given service, for example service 200 and further that they should be using BVID 101. This is advertised by ISIS and all nodes then do the SPBM computation to determine if they are participating either as a head end or tail end, or a tandem point between other head and tail ends in the service. Since node 0 is a tandem between nodes 7 and 5 it creates a forwarding entry for packets from node 7 on this service, to node 5. Likewise. Since it is a tandem between nodes 7 and 4 it creates forwarding state from node 7 for packets in this service to node 4 this results in a true multicast entry where the DAO VID have outputs on two interfaces 1 and 2. Node 2 on the other hand is only on one shortest path in this service and only creates a single forwarding entry from node 7 to node 6 for packets in this service. Figure 3 only shows a single ELAN service and only the tree from one of the members. However very large numbers of ELAN services with membership from 2 to every node in the network can be supported by advertising the membership, computing the tandem behaviors, manufacturing the known multicast addresses and populating the FIBs. The only real limiting factors are the FIB table sizes and computational power of the individual devices both of which are growing yearly in leaps and bounds. Implementation Notes 802.1 ACT takes us as topology information augmented with service attachment information, does a series of computations and produces a forwarding table for unicast and multicast entries. These is extensions that carry the information required by 802.1 ACT are given in the ASIS layer 2 IETF document listed below. An implementation of 802.1 ACK will first modify the ASIS hellos to include an NLP ID of 0xc01 in their protocol supported type length value which has been reserved for 802.1 ACK. The hellos also must include an MST ID and finally each ECMT behavior must be assigned to a VID and exchanged in the hellos. The hellos would normally run and tagged. Note that NLP ID of IP is not required to form an adjacency for 802.1 ACK but also will not prevent an adjacency when present. The links are assigned 802.1 ACK specific metrics which travel in their own TLV which is more or less identical to the IP link metrics. The calculations will always use the minimum of the two unidirectional link metrics to enforce symmetric root weights. The node is assigned a MAC address to identify it globally and this is used to form the ASIS SYSID. A box MAC would normally serve this purpose. The area it is not directly used by 802.1 ACK but should of course be the same for nodes in the same 802.1 ACK network. Multiple areas levels are not yet supported. The node is further assigned an SPSYSID which is a 20-bit network-wide unique identifier. This can often be the low 20 bits of the SYSID or can be dynamically negotiated or manually configured. The SPSID and the ECMT assignments to be VIDs are then advertised into the ASIS network in their own 802.1 ACK TLV. The 802.1 ACK computations are restricted to links between nodes that have an 802.1 ACK link weight and which support the NLP ID 0XC01. 
as previously discussed the link weights are forced to be symmetric for the purpose of computation by taking the min of two dissimilar values. When a service is configured in the form of an ICID assignment to an ECMT behavior that ICID is then advertised along with the desired ECMT behavior and an indication of its transmit, receive properties. When an 802.1 ACK node receives an ASIS update it will compute the unique shortest path to all other ASIS nodes that support 802.1 ACK. There will be one unique shortest path per ECMT behavior. The tie-breaking used to enforce this uniqueness and ECMT is described below. The unicast FDBFIB will be populated based on this first shortest path computation. There will be one entry per ECMT behavior BVID produced. The transit multicast computation can be implemented in many ways. Care must be taken to keep this efficient, but in general a series of shortest path computations must be done. The basic requirement is to decide am I on the shortest path between two nodes one of which transmits an ICID and the other receives that ICID. Rather poor performing pseudo code for this computation looks something like this. For each node in network which originates at least one transmit ISID do, SPF equals compute the shortest path trees from node for all ECMT BVIDs. For each ECMT behavior, for each neighbor of node, if neighbor is on the SPF towards node for this ECMT, T equals nodes transmit ISIDs union with all receive, ISIDs below us on SPF, for each ISID in T, Create modify multicast entry where, MAC DAR equals nodes PSIS ID, 20 ISID, 24 local bit, 1 multicast bit, 1, BVID equals VID associated with the CCMT, out port equals interface to neighbor, in port equals port towards node on the SPF for the CCMT. The above pseudo code computes many more SPFs than strictly necessary in most cases and better algorithms are known to decide if a node is on a shortest path between two other nodes. A reference to a paper presented at the IEE which gives a much faster algorithm that drastically reduces the number of outer iterations required is given below. In general though even the exhaustive algorithm above is more than able to handle several hundred node networks in a few tens of milliseconds on the 1 GHz or greater common CPUs when carefully crafted. For ISIDs that have chosen head-end replication the computation is trivial and involves simply finding the other attachment points that receive that ISID and creating a serial unicus table to replicate to them one by one. Equals tie-breaking equals 802.1 ACK must produce deterministic symmetric downstream congruent shortest paths. This means that not only must a given node compute the same path forward and reverse but all the other nodes downstream on that path must also produce the same result. This downstream congruence is a consequence of the hop by hop forwarding nature of Ethernet since only the destination address and VID are used to decide the next hop. It is important to keep this in mind when trying to design other ECMT algorithms for 802.1 ACK as this is an easy trap to fall into. It begins by taking the unidirectional link metrics that are advertised by ISIS for 802.1 ACK and ensuring that they are symmetric. This is done by simply taking the min of the two values at both ends prior to doing any computations. This alone does not guarantee symmetry however. The 802.1 ACK standard describes a mechanism called a pathid which is a network-wide unique identifier for a path. This is a useful logical way to understand how to deterministically break ties but is not how one would implement such a tiebreaker in practice. The pathid is defined as just the sequence of SYSIDs that make up the path sorted. Every path in the network therefore has a unique pathid independent of where in the network the path is discovered. 802.1 ACK simply always picks the lowest path it path when a choice presents itself in the shortest path computations. This ensures that every node will make the same decision. For example, in figure 7 above, there are four equal cost paths between node 7 and node 5 as shown by the colors blue, green, pink and brown. The path it for these paths are as follows, path it, brown equals 0, 1, path it, Pink equals 0, 3, pathid, green equals 1, 2, pathid, blue equals 2, 3, the lowest pathid is therefore the brown path 0, 1. 
This low path ID algorithm has very desirable properties. The first is that it can be done progressively by simply looking for the lowest SYS ID along a path, and secondly, because an efficient implementation that operates stepwise is possible by simply backtracking two competing paths and looking for the minimum of the two paths' minimum SYS IDs. The low path ID algorithm is the basis of all 802.1 ACT tiebreaking. ECMT is also based on the low path ID algorithm by simply feeding it different SYSID permutations a Euro 1 per ECMT algorithm. The most obvious permutation to pass is a complete inversion of the SYSID by XORing it with 0XFFF. Prior to looking for the min of two minimums, this algorithm is referred to as high path ID because it logically chooses the largest path ID path when presented with two equal cost choices. In the example in figure 7, the path with the highest path ID is therefore the blue path whose path ID is 2, 3. Simply inverting all the SYS IDs and running the low path ID algorithm will yield same result. The other 14 defined ECMT algorithms use different permutations of the SYS ID by XORing it with different bit masks which are designed to create relatively good distribution of bits. It should be clear that different permutations will result in the purple and green paths being lowest in turn. The 17 individual 64-bit masks used by the ECT algorithm are made up of the same byte value repeated 8 times to fill each 64-bit mask. These 17 byte values are as follows. ECT mask, 17, equals 0 x 0 0 x 0 0 x 0 x 88 0x77, 0x44, 0x33, 0xcc, 0xbb, 0x22, 0x11, 0x66, 0x55, 0xaa, 0x99, 0xdd, 0xee. ECT mask, 0, is reserved for a common spanning tree algorithm, while ECT mask, 1, Creates the low path ID set of shortest path first trees. ECT mask, 2, creates the high path ID set of shortest path trees, and the other indexes create other relatively diverse permutations of shortest path first trees. In addition, the ECMT tie breaking algorithms also permit some degree of human override or tweaking. This is accomplished by including a bridge priority field together with the SYS ID such that the combination called a bridge identifier, becomes the input to the ECT algorithm. By adjusting the bridge priority up or down a path's path it can be raised or lowered relative to others and a substantial degree of tunability is afforded. The above description gives an easy to understand way to view the tie breaking. An actual implementation simply backtracks from the fork point to the join point in two competing equal cost paths and picks the path traversing the lowest bridge priority scissored. Interoperability, the first public interoperability tests of IEEE 802.1 AC were held in Ottawa in October 2010. Two vendors provided SPBM implementations and a total of five physical switches and 32 emulated switches were tested for control data and OA and M. Further events were held in Ottawa in January 2011 with five vendors and six implementations. At 2013's Intrap event at Las Vegas where an SPBM network was used as a backbone. Competitors, MCLAG, VXLAN, Cabric and have all been proposed, but the IETF Trill standard is considered the major competitor of IEEE 802.1 AC, and, the evaluation of relative merits and difference of the two standards proposals is currently a hotly debated topic in the networking industry. See also Provider Backbone Bridge Traffic Engineering, Virtual Enterprise Network Architecture, Connection Oriented Ethernet. Notes. References. Avara and the Magic of SPB. The Networking Nerd October 14, 2013. Retrieved October 14, 2013. Paul Umbigan Talks SPB. Intrap New York, 2013 Tech Field Day October 3, 2013. Retrieved October 3, 2013. Show 158, of our software-defined data center and Fabric Connect. Packet Pushes Podcast August 21, 2013. Retrieved August 21, 2013. 
Show 147, of our Fabric Connect makes Multicast simple. Packet Pushes Podcast May 13, 2013. Retrieved May 13, 2013. Show 136, of our consideration for turning your network into an Ethernet fabric. Packet Pushes Podcast February 18, 2013. Retrieved February 18, 2013. Show 44, The Case for Shortest Path Bridging. Packet Pushes Podcast May 15, 2011. Retrieved May 15, 2011. Ashwood Smith, Peter. Asia Pacific Conference. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Ashwood Smith, Peter. Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 Act Tutorial Video. NANOG50. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Ashwood Smith, Peter. Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 Act Tutorial Slides. NANOG50. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Ashwood Smith, Peter. Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 Act Video. NANOG49. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Ashwood Smith, Peter. Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 Act Slides. NANOG 49. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Fedic, Don. Ashwood Smith, Peter. RFC 6329, is his extension supporting IEEE 802.1 Act Shortest Path Bridging. IETF. Retrieved April 2, 2012. Ashwood Smith, Peter. Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 ACK Overview and Applications UK Network Operators Forum Retrieved July 20, 2011 Fedic, Don Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 ACK Overview Retrieved July 20, 2011 Shortest Path Bridging IEEE 802.1 ACK Insightful Technology Talk July 14, 2010 Retrieved July 20, 2011. Alon, David. Shortest Path Bridging, a novel control pane for Ethernet. ONTC Prism Newsletter 1. Retrieved July 20, 2011. 802.1 Act Shortest Path Bridging Work Group. IEEE. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Kaibat, Jar Copyright Rami. Bragg, Nigel. Speeding up the SPB computation. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Ashwood Smith, Peter. IEEE 802.1 AC Equal Cost Tree Framework Proposal. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Fedic, Don. Botoff, Paul. Provider Link State Bridging. Retrieved July 20, 2011. Fedic, Don. Provider Link State Bridging. Alon, D. Ashwood Smith, P. Bragg, N. Fedic, D. Provider Link State Bridging. IEEE Communications Magazine 46, 110 Euro 117 DOI, 10.1109 slash MCOM. 2008.4623715. ISSN 0163-6804. Further reading. Howard Solomon. Tests shows SPB ready, say network equipment makers. IT World Canada. Retrieved September 11, 2011. Alcatel, Avada, Huawei, Spirit Trial SPB Interoperability. Telecom Paper. September 8, 2011. Alon, David. Bragg, Nigel. 802.1 Act Shortest Path Bridging Design and Evolution. The Architect's Perspective. John Wiley and Sons Incorporated. ISBN 978-1-118-14866-2. Introduction to Shortest Path Bridging. Avala. September 2009. Retrieved January 5, 2011. The Great Debate, Trill vs. 802.1 AC, NANOG 50 Session. External links
802 Committee Website, ITUT Recommendation Y 1731 OAM Functions and Mechanisms for Ethernet Based Networks, Avaya Alcatel Lucent Hoe Solana and Sprint Showcase Shortest Path Bridging Interoperability. Marked Watch, September 7, 2011, Retrieved September 7, 2011.